I'll give you two. My first one was winning my first pro title at the age of 19, winning the WBO European title in Birmingham. It was a fight where the odds were stacked against me. I wasn't meant, I wasn't meant to win it. And then I went in there and got the job done within six rounds. And then the second one would be my last fight. Not so much the fight itself, but everything that happened after it, leading up to where we are today. It would be dealing with people you get coming around you to be part of your team or trying to be part of your team. The reason why I say it's a challenge is because most people are all around you for their own benefit and they massage your ego and before you know it, you're two, three years friendship in with them and then before you know it, that's it, so it's all over. So yeah, that's definitely one of the biggest challenges. I'd say not in boxing, but just in sport in general and in life as well. Um, the best boxing advice I've ever received would probably be from Joe Goosen, who's a Hall of Fame trainer out in Los Angeles. I remember he sat me down and he said to me, just no matter what happens in your life, no matter what happens in your career, just put the blinkers on, look forward and make it happen. For someone of his calibre to, to reinforce it in me and to sit me down and tell me, this is what you got to do to, to get to where you want to get, it was it was refreshing to hear. It'd be either Floyd Merva or Muhammad Ali. And the simple answer of Muhammad Ali would be the fact that he's just a legend in and out of the ring. And it'd just be an honor to be even in his presence, to say the least. Uh, and Floyd Merva just for the fact that he is one of the most skillful fighters who I've been able to watch as well in, in, in person. So yeah, to be in there with him would be an honour. Simple, I normally have a, a, a salmon with a bit of rice and a sweet potato and some salad as well. But then after the fight, I eat whatever. Whatever I look at, I eat. <laughs> I think the fact that you've been given a platform, you've been given this massive platform, and I understand that you kind of have to work for it to, for that platform to be bigger. Being able to use that platform as an inspiration for, for the younger generation, for the, for the generation coming through. And not even the younger generation, to be fair, people older than me as well. I've motivated a lot of people who are, who are older than me. Um, it, it's almost like you're that beacon of light for them. Boxing wise would be to win three different world titles at 160 pounds, 168 pounds and 175 pounds. And then outside the ring just inspire as many people as possible. I've had this question loads this one. And the more the more I think about it to be fair is the more I kind of accept the fact if I wasn't a boxer, I think I'd have a, had a, have a normal nine to five. Like I'd be a sparky. My favorite movie is The Art of Racing in the Rain. Um, but it's a film about a man and his dog. The dog detects that the guy is gonna fall ill and whatnot. And it's a quite emotional uh, movie because I have two dogs myself and I love my animals as well. So yeah, that one hits home. <laughs> Steak, steak, that's, it's an easy one, that is steak all day long. I can, can eat that seven days a week, three times a day. The misconception I have about boxers is that they're all dumb. They're all, they're all really um, uneducated and, and, and really dumb and hence why they go into such brutal, such a brutal and simple sport. But if you look at all the top caliber of fighters, they're actually very, very um, down to earth and very educated and very f uh, philosophical people. Uh, to learn the piano. It's been on my list for ages, but like I've never had the time. I'm always in training, always doing camp. So maybe when I'm retired one day, I can sit back and, and start to learn the piano.
remind myself that not, not everyone wants you to do good and not everyone's happy for you and not everyone wants to see you winning. And to protect your privacy. That's one thing that I feel like as a young athlete, I didn't really um, understand it. If I could go back, like we said, I'd definitely tell myself from day one, protect your privacy. The only reason I can handle them is because I'm a, I'm a big believer in God and I'm a big believer in everything's written and everything happens for a reason. I've always had that uh, mentality when, it, when the thing's gone wrong, when fights have been cancelled, when I've been injured or whatnot, I've always ad adopted that mentality of what's meant to be will be and everything's written and I can only do what's in my capable power of doing my best. So it's as simple as that. Uh, the secret's uh, definitely been me staying in touch with my religion and having a much deeper understanding of what my religion actually is and what it teaches and what it entails and at the same time understanding that my religion and boxing complement each other and like I said not only until then I realised it's kind of got me to where I am today. Allah is the best of planners. Yeah. SubhanAllah, Allah is truly the best of planners. Sometimes we don't understand why Allah is doing something. We think to ourselves that, you know, why me? Why this? Why that? But the moment you see the greatness and the beauty that comes out of your difficulties, trials, challenges, whatever it may be, mm. when you see the beauty out of it and the response to it from Allah, then you realize that what Allah did was only because He loves you.